I am going to think for a very long time about what you just said, that they tried to say that atheism was scientific because that really sent a chill down my spine because I've been speaking a lot about on my show about how I've recognized that modern science is fraudulent. And the media did not like this. They really you know, called me stupid. And, and I said, well, you're now having people that just deem themselves experts. And all they have to do is say that it's a science and people get in line. And I think now the public recognizes that post-COVID, which became of religion. I mean, they, they just would say six feet social distancing and people would get in line. Don't see your grandparents. Trust it. The, even the phrase trust the science, yep. trust the science. There was something about that that felt so demonic to me. Mm -hmm. of you're just saying implicitly, almost as if the science has become this pagan god. And I do believe this. I believe science has become this sort of, it's, it's a form of paganism where there's no logic anymore. It's just somebody deeming themselves an expert, but there's so much that they have been able to accomplish evil, in my view, in Western society under the guise of science, because what they do is they then teach it to people in school and people then view that as a token of their education. Well, I learned that six feet social distancing is right, so it can't be wrong. Well, I learned that, you know, I'm, I'm someone that speaks against, you know, the, the vaccine industry, really. Well, I learned in medical school that as soon as the child comes out, there's something wrong with it and they need all these injections. And so to hear that they even manipulated science and tried to say atheism is actually scientific mm -hmm. is really something I've never heard of before. That is fascinating. It was very famous. And you had to make exam to pass, for example, in university degree to graduate. In, you had to, to do the exam on scientific ethics. Otherwise, you would not obtain a grade. Wow. And they, I mean, they're doing this even in terms of history. And this, this becomes the threat of the education system, because I do believe that what we're existing under is Soviet propaganda. Um, when I examine, again, my own childhood and how I learned things, where everything they do as long as they say that there's a statistic behind it, even if they can't explain it. Perfect example. Uh, recently, a host got in trouble for, it was Tucker Carlson. Um, he was speaking about the dropping of the atom bomb. And I, I'm very, very against it. I agree with Tucker Carlson on this, especially because we dropped it in Nagasaki on praying Catholics. So maybe I have a Catholic bias there. Um, but, you know, they teach in school, if we didn't do that, then the war wouldn't have ended. Right. And so it's now become this sort of scientific understanding, statistical understanding that more people, way more people would have died if we didn't do this. And people commit to that idea and it becomes a token of their education. And then they sort of remove themselves from just this basic moral. <laughs> You're dropping a bomb on innocent praying Catholics 300 feet in Nagasaki. And they just go, but I learned this in school. So there becomes this danger in really transforming the schools into the church. Like it's, it's almost like a, a church of sorts. It becomes the, the church of education. Yes, exactly. And this is uh, a system, I repeat, of lie, mm -hmm. as the communist system was. And therefore we must... Um, we must again proclaim our right to think independently. So independent thinking is quite now forbidden. There is only one way of thinking. And therefore we must again free our children, our society, from this system of lie, from this denial of evidence, and to, to establish again a society where you can think freely and seriously present the truth of history and of our social life. Yeah, I mean, this gets into really the humanist agenda where I, I examine things through a lens now and I go, okay, what they've done is they've taken the Bible and they've said, let's remove God 
and elect ourselves the God and sort of re-implement things. Really, we're going to turn the Bible on its on its head. So it's just going to be marriage is bad. Marriage is not between a man and woman. It can be between a man and a monkey. It can be anything that you want. Uh, it can be homosexual. Uh, everything that is in the Bible, they have perverted, inverted, or converted into something else. And rather than going to mass, we're going to have kids mass every day. They're going to go to school every single day. And we're going to teach them things like pornography is good and really give in to their pleasures. There's going to be no discipline. There's going to be no concept of discipline. And we're going to raise them to believe that they are their own authority. And authority is a very important world, a word when it comes to Western society, because when I kind of got interested in the Catholic faith, so to speak, I did realize that Americans have been conditioned to protest Protestants, so to speak, to protest the very concept of authority. Mm -hmm. And this is what's wrong and what's backwards about the Catholic faith. And we do learn this in school. There's The Catholics are a, a implicit enemy in our textbooks. Everything, this was the old world, the dark ages, the, and now we have science and it's modern and we don't need God because we have reason and it's everything scientific. And so do you, I mean, first off, do you know that there is sort of this resistance to the Catholic church, I would say, and in the West, particularly in America, but also in the UK and other places. And to what do you attribute that? Well, the first who denied uh, authority was the devil. But it, in the beginning of the Holy Scripture in the book of Genesis, he questioned, he said to Adam and Eve, it is true that God commanded you, so he challenged the authority of God. And since then, the devil is um, <clears throat> influencing people with this poison, this first poison, to, to challenge and to deny reality. And then the devil said, you will be like God. This is the most dangerous temptation for all human beings in societies. And this is the battle which is going on since then. But we had an historical, you mentioned that now they are turning uh, to the contrary, what the Bible says, that matrimony is good, and so on, that, that they say matrimony is bad, the two sexes are bad, we have to have other possibilities. So we had a historical phenomenon which was called Gnosticism, the Gnosis. 2,000 years ago, it was an um, intellectual movement or fashion. Uh, it was not Christian. Um, more or less 2,000 years ago, in the, in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, they infiltrated the church in the second century, the Gnostics, and they, therefore there was also a kind of Christian Gnosis. Mm -hmm. But the other was pagan, but the, the, the principles were the same. It's to say that the one of the principles of the Gnosis, which is now again revived, they said, all what is written in the Bible, the Bible is a product of the evil God. They established two principles, the evil God and the good God. They are equal from all eternity. This is the so-called metaphysical dualism. And so they said, oh, the Bible is a product of the evil God. And all what is in the Bible written, which is good, is de facto not good, is evil. So, the Ten Commandments, who gave us, they say, the Gnostics, the evil God. Therefore, not to kill is wrong. To kill is good. Today, we are killing all our, uh, almost uh, the planetarian genocide of the unborn. It's good, they say. It's Gnostic. And then they say, God created man, male and female. And God saw it was good. And the Gnostics said, this is bad that there are two sexes. They, they said already 2,000 years ago this. 
It is evil that there are two sexes. This is an invention of the evil God. Now we must overcome the di distinction of the sexes. And this was a program of the historical Gnosis. And this, one of these principles of the Gnosis uh, went very much well take, taken f of, from the free Masonic ideology. They took almost a great part of the principles of the historical Gnosis and they recognize it. And so, and then <clears throat> the Gnosis, one other principle was that we will, we will achieve, let us say, happiness or salvation, you can call it as you want, simply through, through thinking. This means gnosis in Greek is thinking mm. or knowledge. Independently of our moral behavior, of our moral acts, the exterior acts are not important. You can kill, you can live in adultery and so on. It does not matter. It is sufficient your thinking and your knowledge and a kind of secret elitarian knowledge, where basically then uh, man will establish, and they establish what is good and what is evil. So we see this is a perversion which was instilled by the devil, of course, since the beginning of the temptation of Adam and Eve, but manifested historically in the historical Gnosis movement, 2000 years, then revived again in a great to a great extent in the Freemasonic ideology, which we are now witnessing also. Yes, and that was another element of American history that I was really startled by when I was speaking to a, a priest in the UK. And he sort of said to me, you Americans just don't know nothing about history, you know nothing about the battle of the Freemasons for America. And I began there and started really understanding these Freemason groups and what they were about. And yes, and, and one element that, that came from uh, Freemasonry was uh, psychology, like modern psychology, is, and which is to me, a tremendous evil today that we're seeing. And they use psychology again, turn it into a science, right? Turn this into a science. And this is how you get so many kids who believe that they have authority over their own bodies. And they're constantly, you know, put your child into therapy where, where it used to be the role when you had burdens to go to a priest. They now say, oh, actually, the person you need to go to is a psychologist. But when you really examine the history of everything that's gone very wrong in our society, there is always a psychologist behind it, you know, teaching kids that pornography is good. Right. This was this was something that was given to us by psychologists, this concept that it's actually good for people to explore their sexuality and so much that has, again, another attack on the family unit, something that so many men are struggling with. And this is one of the things that brought me back to another Catholic teaching when I developed really strong a really strong understanding that pornography is an evil. Yet I learned in school, can you believe this? In school in America, you learn when you are in high school that watching pornography is healthy. This is science. It's healthy to watch a little bit of pornography. Um, and now I look back on that and I just go, what a, a tremendous evil to teach that to children while at the same time using the media, again, another tool, to promote pornography, even in its minor forms, like everything is now softcore pornography. In the advertisements, it's softcore pornography. When you're reading the news, I mean, just the way people dress, everything has become pornographic and it's intentional and it's evil and it's demonic and it is, it is an attack on the institution of the family. Exactly. Especially pornography is one of the most dangerous spiritual poisons. So they are giving poison to our children. This is criminal. We have to we have to state this. The the authorities. We must protest against this. We must we must free our children from the poison because pornography. It is proven. It is one of the most enslaving um, factors and and consequences. They really, it is addiction and enslaving you. You become a slave. And there, there is no love. 
because only with love you can heal. Mm. This true love. We are created by God for love. For him, to love him, the absolute good and love is God. And we are created to love him, to know him, and to be with him all eternity. And now here on earth we must learn to love truly the supreme good and love which is God. And who demonstrated his love for us, giving his own life and blood for us, dying on the cross and elevating us to the dignity of children of God, of this nobility. And so these uh, pornography methods are really turning our children and youth to, to animals, mm. even birds. Even the famous Italian poet Dante, he made this expression, we are not created to be beasts with these pleasures only. We are created to have wisdom and virtue. And this gives us again our dignity and our happiness. And so we must educate our children to, to virtue. Because pornography is basically egoism, narcissism. And these people can never become happy and never, never uh, make the other happy. We are love. We are created to love and to and to be loved, and to give love. Only then you are happy. And I repeat again. Uh, the the political social elites, they simply want to transform our society, our children and youth to slaves. And when you are addicted to pornography or other addictions, drugs, and so you are a slave. And then you can be manipulated very, very easily. So we must start an action, a crusade, an action to free our children and youth and our citizens from the slavery concretely of pornography and of this satanic, gnostic thought of against marriage, against evidence, against nature. So we have to restore simply common sense. Mm -hmm. This is so really um, a healthy breath, common sense. And this we must restore, and then, of course, to bring the true wisdom, the true virtue, which is ultimately only possible with the help of God, who is the wisdom, who is the love, who is the truth.